little bit of time at the end, folks. Um, these statements are equivalent. We could, uh, we're talking about consecutive natural numbers, so you could write it like this. U at, where uh, mu is the um, Mobius function. We'll talk more about that. But what I'm writing down is equivalent to the statement below it effectively as far as the proof goes. Okay, if we can prove either this statement or, or this statement, then we've done our job, okay? Because uh, n minus 1 and n are consecutive natural numbers, just like n and n plus 1 are consecutive natural numbers. And just notationally, it's a little bit more convenient to think of think of this proof both ways, at least the way I did it. Now, we're trying to show there's an infinite number of natural numbers, and that means positive integer solutions, okay? Now, let's, let's just take a look at the definition of, of the Mobius function. It looks pretty strange until you take a little bit of number theory and work with what they call arithmetic functions, but it's, it's a trivalent output function. You can get one, zero, or you can get one or minus one, depending on if you have an odd or an even number of distinct prime uh, divisors in your natural number, of your natural number. Now, just a quick example, uh, mu at 75 uh, would be equal to zero that's because 5 squared divides 75 is a divisor of 75 3 times 25 is 75 right now let's just take a look at one other quick example if, you're, if you haven't used this thing before uh, what if we had uh, let's say mu at and I'm just going to leave it in prime factorization form. It's a little bit easier just to do that. You'd have to decompose your number into its prime factors to determine the Mobius uh, value for it. So I'm going to do 5 times 7 times 11. We don't need to know what that is. We do need to know that is an odd number of distinct prime factors. 5, 7, 11 are both uh, uh, primes. And they're, uh, they're odd in this case. Not, not particularly important as far as the Mobius function goes. So this would be equal to, since there's three of them, this would be equal to minus one raised to the uh, third power, which is negative one. Okay, so that's just a couple of examples of, of both instances of the of the Mobius function here. If it's uh, not square free, this is what this part is. If it's not square free, if it has a square. Uh, it always evaluates to zero. Have, if it has any kind of square factor, whether it be a prime square factor or a composite square factor, it's going to be uh, it's, the Mobius value is going to be zero. Okay. Now, uh, so the way this proof is going to go, uh, we're going to go ahead and let n n be any product of of k distinct odd primes. So k is an odd number. And each of the primes is odd also. Uh, that means the n would be odd itself, okay? So that'll be important here in a minute. Uh, n itself by this assignment is going to be odd because it's the product of odd numbers, okay? Distinct odd numbers, okay? So n itself is odd uh, by the fact that this subscript k is odd. Uh, well, it's just if you multiply a bunch of odd numbers together, you're, whether they're prime or not, you're, you're going to get an odd number back. Okay, now, so <clears throat> we get mu of n is equal to negative 1 for free. Uh, I mean, we get mu of this, yeah, we get mu of n as it's assigned is equal to negative 1 since k is odd, right? k is odd minus 1 to an odd value is odd back, right? So you see we're interested in that because we want the whole thing to be equal to negative 1. And so far we, we've created an n that's equal to negative 1. That means we want n plus 1 or n minus 1 to be divisible by square. And we'll, we will have proved it because there's an infinite number of n's of this form. Since there's an infinite number of primes, there's an infinite number of n uh, that would uh, satisfy this condition. Okay? Now, <clears throat> so, uh, n is odd, so both n minus 1 and n plus 1 are even. Let me write that right here above. Both of these guys are even. That answers the why question. But an even number times an even number is divisible by 4, right? And this is the congruential uh, modular, arithmetic, modular arithmetic way to do this. Okay, this really says this minus 0 is divisible by 4, okay? Now, also notice that, um, whoops, I made a mistake right here, uh, that, that 
least common denominator or the greatest common uh, divisor of n minus 1 and n plus 2 is 2. This should be a 2 right here. Just think 14 and 16, greatest common divisor is 2. Uh, 18 and 22, consecutive. These, this would be consecutive uh, uh, even numbers, right? These would be consecutive even numbers. And the GCD of consecutive even numbers is 2. I won't prove that. It's a fairly straightforward proof. You prove it, I, I prove it by contradiction, you know? Okay, so that implies that 4 has to divide n minus 1 or n plus 1 in an exclusive sort of way. Not both. It couldn't divide both. Otherwise, the GCD of these two consecutive numbers would be 4, right? It's a known fact that the GCD of consecutive even numbers, uh, the greatest common divisor is 2. So 4 can only divide one of these. Now, we'd be happy if it divides both as far as the proof of this goes, but it can only divide one, and this is an exclusive or sort of deal for computer programmers, okay? So again, we have 4 divides n minus 1 or 4 divides uh, n plus 1. But notice that meets the condition. That means that, you know, 4 is 2 squared, right? 4 is the same as 2 squared. So that means it, it, it sends a 0, right? It, it matches back up 2 squared, 0, right? So what we have right here, that would say that mu at n minus 1 uh, was equal to zero, or um, and notice this has nothing to do with the primality other than we're dealing with odd primes. This is just true for plain old odd numbers. Okay, or mu at n plus one is equal to zero. Okay. But you see, we can go ahead and write QED right now because that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for either one of these to be equal to zero. And in, in either case, we will have either this condition true or this condition true. Remember, mu at n is already known to be negative one. We constructed n to, to have a mu value of negative one. Uh, and then this a little bit of modular arithmetic right here establishes that either 4 is a divisor of n minus 1 or 4 is a divisor of n plus 1. Okay, so that gets the job done and we finish as far as the proof goes. Now, y'all, let, let's just look at a concrete example. Let's remember our, um, our, our example mu at uh, 3 times 5 times 7, right? Now, we learned earlier there's an odd number of factors here, so this, let me just keep writing. Okay, now, uh, this would be 105, so uh, I'm going to just go ahead and put, if we subtract 1 from this, mu at 3 times 5 times 7 minus 1, okay, that's this, this is 104 inside of here, right, I believe, let me make sure. 7 times 5 is 35. 3 times 35 is 105. 105 minus 1 is 104. And 104 is equal to 4 times 26. Okay, so it's divisible by uh, p squared. Okay, so right here we get, this is a concrete example of it working. Uh, this would be minus 1 plus 0 equals 2 minus 1. Okay, so there's a nice concrete example, simple calculation because the primes are small. But it, this would hold for any uh, finite product of distinct odd primes. It doesn't, it doesn't work for 2 times 3 times 5. You would get 29 and 31, you know, the, the, the fabled uh, uh, twin prime, okay? So it doesn't work for, for the, you know, 2 is always kind of a, a, a pathological case when you're doing number theory, it seems like. But in any event, all of this right here was... Uh, what we intended to prove. Hopefully it's clear enough and uh, thank you for viewing.